Good day, everyone, and welcome to the webinar, uh, which is called High Fidelity with Realism. In this webinar, I would like to share with you our experience with Elena Simbaby, which is a realistic interactive simulator we use in our department. And further on, I would like to uh, take you in a real uh, life scenario training as we perform regularly in our department. My name is Danielle Roofthoofd and I'm a neonatologist and medical coordinator in Sofia Children's Hospital in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. And we are part of the Erasmus Medical Center. Neonatology ward is a level three NICU with currently 27 beds. And in the coming years, we will expand our ward to a 35 bed department. Training um, uh, nurses, students, Residents, nurse practitioners, fellows in neonatology is our core, neonatologist is our core business. And uh, the training programs are done regularly on our ward. We provide multidisciplinary trainings on our department with every caretaker involved in taking care of newborn babies. But we also do combined scenario training sessions in the mother and child center where we train medical and nurse staff together of the obstetric, gynecology and neonatology ward. We have been working with the Nena Sim for quite some years and it is a true interactive and realistic simulator and a very useful tool in teaching neonatal life support in different skills and CPR. And in our opinion and experience, uh, training with the Nena Sim is the closest you can get for training with a real baby. We started off with the Nena Sim with pre-programmed scenarios, but what we found out along the way is that the participants are very innovative and they come up with every solution that you did not think about when you pre-programmed the scenario. So then the scenario stops or the participant does not meet the predefined uh, actions we would like to see. So we switched over to the manual mode and during the course of a scenario, we changed the vital signs, signs in a manual mode and it works very well. And what you see is when a participant is very um, trained, you can let the scenario run much further than when a participant is not that trained, but you can give the less trained participant more time. I like to take you through the features that the Nena Sim specifically has and what makes it a really realistic and interactive um, simulator. First of all, it is the skin. The skin is a silicone uh, skin, which is very soft and which makes the mannequin less stiff in comparison with other simulating uh, mannequins. Uh, second of all, the color of the skin can be changed from different colors. First of all, you can make the baby look very cyanotic on specific places on the arm of legs and on the chin. The second color will be a pale color, like in an anemic child. The third color will be just a pink color, so the baby is very well oxygenated. And the last one is a yellow baby. What you also can see is a ventilated infant or a baby who is breathing on its own by his breathing motion. And a lot of babies use uh, ab abdominal motion and uh, you see the thorax excursions too. Another feature is that you can put in a pneumothorax drain whenever you have a pneumothorax. The, you can only do this on the right hand side, but it's also a very good skill to practice. Another thing is, um, if you move the baby, you see that it is floppy and the head is moving. With a lot of mannequins, they are very stiff. So when you put the baby down, you have to choose the right position is the neutral position with the head tilt chin lift. And the baby, because it is floppy, is not in the good position all the time. Another thing is the movement of the arms and legs you can use in the scenario. So the baby is more realistic and, uh, and alive and moving arms or legs. Um, then if you uh, go to the head, the head is relatively big in comparison with the rest of the body, but it has to do with the, the software and the hardware, that's in, the hardware that's in the head. But if you look at the head, you see the fontanelle, and the fontanelle can change in position. This is the normal fontanelle, which is in the same level as the head bones, 
we can show you a sunken fontanelle when the baby is dehydrated. And what we also have is a very bulging fontanelle when you have intracerebral pathology, like there could be a bleeding or a uh, serious uh, meningitis. And especially when you do this feature in comparison with seizures, you can uh, perform a scenario where the baby is seizing with an, with an infection. Furthermore, if you look at the baby, the baby's eyes, uh, the pupils can respond to light and the eyelids can move too. So when someone likes to do neuro neurologic uh, uh, controls, you can open the eyes and then you sign in with the light and you see the pupil dilating or getting smaller. Another feature is that this baby is, uh, is able to be intubated nasally, like we neonatologists like, uh, and also orally. And what is also an, a very nice feature is when you, when you use alternative airway movements, the jaw thrust is one that is very easy to be done. Then second of all, of course, the baby, you, you are able to ventilate the baby. Uh, so you can see the lung movements in different ways. And you can hear, listen with a, a special stethoscope to the lung sounds and also the cardiac sounds. And what you can do, here you see the baby moving. These are uh, thorax excursions and they are really clear to see. Uh, you can import lung and cardiac sounds in the computer. So in a certain scenario, you can uh, uh, listen with the, with the stethoscope and play the sound. The baby can also cry and make sounds. But normally when a newborn baby is in problems, they don't, they don't cry. But this is the crying sound. Normally they are much more quiet. And in a scenario, we hardly ever use this feature, but you can do a grunting sound when a child is in respir respiratory distress. What is important too, is that you can do a very clear CPR and you do it on compressing the thorax. It's very easy to, to do. And the tutor who is uh, uh, behind the monitor can see whether or not my compressions are effective enough and if my rhythm is, uh, is, is good enough. A second, you have a umbilical cord where you can put in an, an uh, arterial or a venous catheter and you can use uh, the, the umbilical cord. Further, you can do a catheterization uh, you can feel pulses in the femoral, but also brachialis pulsations. Uh, and also you can feel the pulses in the umbilical cord. So if you want to do an extended scenario, a lot of features can be used and it makes this, this mannequin really specific.